What's going on guys and welcome to my 2023 Japanese Grand Prix driver tier list video. Today we're ranking all 20 drivers that took part in the 2023 Japanese Grand Prix based on how I think they did in the race. Mostly qualifying does somewhat come into effect as well but it is mainly based on the race. And yeah we're doing a tier list like always from S down to F. So let's get started with Alexander Albon finished in... Did not finish. P16. Um, had a very bad start. Got launched up into the air right at the start. I don't think that was really his fault. Um, and then had to retire the car a bit later on because of the damage, I believe. Um, yeah, uh, qualifying was decent from from Albon. Didn't get through to Q3, unfortunately. Uh, Q3. I said that really weirdly. Three. I don't know. Did I say that weirdly or is that just me in my head? I'm not sure. But um, yeah, compared to how he's been lately, not the best race, but not really his fault either. Um, I don't think I can really... I don't know. I, you didn't really see enough from him to justify much. So I think it's going to have to be a C just because we didn't see enough of him in the race. And I mean, the quality was, was decent, but he didn't get into Q3. But maybe that just wasn't expected of this car at this track, so fair enough. But um, yeah, just with everything that happened in the race, I think I'm just going to... I've got to go down the middle with a C. Next up, Fernando Alonso finished P... Uh, da -da 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 -da, where was he? Where's Fernando? P8. So once again, Aston Martin not really having any pace this weekend. They've really fallen off a cliff since the, la since the, uh, the start of the season. Um, but I think Alonso did about as much as he could have in this race. Um, I can't go all the way to an A, but I'm going to give Alonso a B here. It was definitely a better weekend than last time out in Singapore. So um, yeah, I think a B. I think he probably got about as much as he could out of that car. Valtteri Bottas. What a dismal weekend once again for Alfa Romeo. Um, DNF right at the start. Wasn't his fault though. The sergeant absolutely plummeted up the inside of him. Um, locked up. Spun Bottas round. Stuck him in the gravel, uh, in the sand or whatever it was. I think he did manage to get out but then had too much damage and retired the car. Um, so all in all, I can't really give him anything more than C because... It wasn't his fault. The reason why he, you know, if the if his DNF was his own fault, I would have put it down more. The DNF wasn't his fault. The Alfa Romeo was kind of nowhere all weekend. I've kind of just got to give him a C. There's not really much more I can do. Pierre Gasly, really interesting with Gasly. We didn't see it in the live feed, but I have seen footage afterwards that I believe he was in front of Ocon, but Ocon was in on I think a quicker strategy or no, sorry, no. He was behind Ocon, but Gasly was on a quicker strategy. Ocon let him pass, let Gasly pass to go and chase after Alonso, but Gasly wasn't able to catch up to Alonso, and the team told him to literally, and begged him to, to let Ocon pass right at the end of the race. He, he did that, he let Ocon back pass again, so Ocon was P9, Gasly was P10. But oh my god, I haven't actually heard the team radio yet. I should have probably looked at that before I, uh, what before I started doing this video. But I have seen the footage um, of Gasly absolutely going off on one in his cockpit, just yeah, just really going off. And I'm a little bit confused by that because he was behind Ocon. Yes, maybe his strategy worked better, but he wasn't able to catch Alonso, so let Ocon back through. He was a long way ahead of Ocon though, so we had to pretty much stop on track to let Ocon back through again. But um. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, all in all, decent weekend from the Alpines. 9 and 10, it was all right. Um, do I give them anything more than... Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's really difficult um, for, for where the Alpines kind of sit at the moment. Um, is the C harsh? I think maybe it is. I think I'll go B. I don't know really what else I can say. I didn't really see a lot of them at all this weekend from what I remember. Lewis Hamilton finished P5. Pretty good weekend from Hamilton. Um, definitely got the better strategy of the two Mercedes. I do wonder if they they did that on purpose, split the strategies, just to make sure they didn't collide with each other because I think it's it's coming to a point where that those two are going to they're going to come into contact with each other pretty soon, I reckon. I reckon by the end of the season, there's going to have been an issue, a decent incident between the two Mercedes drivers. Um, but yeah, Hamilton made his strategy work, um, got caught up behind Sainz for a little bit, ended up finishing ahead of Sainz in the end, though, just about. Um, 
and yeah, I think it was a it was actually a pretty good weekend from Hamilton. All in all, the the Mercedes did not look like it had good pace this weekend at all. So I'm going to go an A for Hamilton. I think pretty decent overall for him, about as much as he could have hoped for because that car was it was slower than the Red Bulls. It was slower than the McLarens. It was probably slower than the Ferraris as well. And he was, I think, actually catching Leclerc at the end. Um, but yeah, pretty good job from Hamilton. Nico Hulkenberg finished P14. If it's Haas, it's Haas. C. I can't, I can't give them more than that because they're just nowhere. Yeah, what else can I say? Um, got beaten by Magnussen in poly as well, and probably would have lost out to Magnussen in the race if he didn't get punted around by Perez. We'll get to that later. Liam Lawson, another very good weekend for Liam Lawson. P11 for him. Beat Sonoda. Um, I'm gonna give him an A. I think, you know, you've beaten your teammate at his home race. Yes, Liam has raced here a lot. It's actually the most recent track he's raced at, I think. Um, not in Formula 1. So, yeah, he expects him to be good here. I guess he's got more recent experience at this track than Sonoda does. But, um, yeah, all in all, he did he did get beaten by Sonoda in qualifying fairly convincingly. But, um, yeah, in the race, just did a really good race. I'm not sure if the strategies were different between them, and that's why, but... um. Yeah, had a bit of a tussle with each other right at the start of the race, actually. So that was interesting. But um, yeah, another good race from Lawson. He's just had four really good races. I'm not sure if he'll be there for Qatar or not. I haven't heard yet. But um, yeah, if this is all he gets, then he's had four very good performances um, out of four. So very good stuff from him. Charles Leclerc finished P4. A good race for Leclerc. Ferrari, yeah, they were okay this weekend. They did not have the pace of the McLarens or the Red Bulls, but Leclerc did about as much as he could do, so I'm going to give him an A. It's it's a bit of a bounce-back weekend from Leclerc after a couple of not-so-great weekends, getting definitely beaten by Sainz. Had a better weekend this time, so an A from Sainz. Four, not from Sainz. I don't think Sainz would be giving Leclerc an A. It's an A for Leclerc. We'll see Sainz in a moment. Um, Kevin Magnussen. So he finished P14. No, yes. No, 15, sorry. Yeah, Hulkenberg 14, Magnussen 15, last of the runners. That was mostly because he got punted around by um, by Perez, though, and he was doing pretty decent up until that point. I still don't think I can give him more than a C, though. Um, yeah. Hass. <laughs> Just Hass. Lando Norris, P2. Got the most out of that car. Um, he... Got beaten by Piastri in qualifying. So for that, and I mean, I know I say that the race is the main thing we go off, but qualifying had to come into effect at, as well. And I think he got beaten by about a tenth, I think, from Piastri in quali. Got him straight away in the race, and yeah, was way quicker than him in the race. But I'm going to go an A because we gave him an S in Singapore. He had a great race in Singapore. It was another great race here, but he did get beaten by Oscar in quali. So because of that, I'm going to go A. Uh, maybe that's a bit harsh, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, Esteban Ocon, I've got to go for a B once again. I didn't really see a lot of the Alpines, but they managed to get in the points. Um, and yeah, like I said, Ocon got past Gazi right at the end, was let past. That whole scenario was very interesting. Definitely want to look more into that. Now, this is something, and this is a driver we can talk quite a lot about. Sergio Perez. <laughs> oh, God. Um... Yeah, probably his second worst weekend of the year. And that's that's funny because this was a bad weekend and it's only probably his second worst. I think Monaco was the worst. But geez, um I mean yeah, you know what? No, I've got to give him an F. I gave him a D in Singapore. He punted two people out of the race, but did manage to finish in the points. Gave him a D. This time he I think made contact with three cars, so I think it was Hamilton at the start, I'm not sure if he made contact with Norris, but he was very close with Norris when the safety car came out, or the VSC, um, and then he of course wiped out, or spun round Magnussen as well, so apart from the first incident that was not really his fault, it was more of just a racing incident, kind of cars moving in on each other into turn one, the others were completely his fault, he had no pace, they literally retired him from the race, because they ran out of front wings, I believe, um, and then literally unretired him to serve a penalty to then retire him again. 
what a terrible weekend for Sergio Perez. Seriously, like what I I don't think he deserves to be in that seat next year. I think he's gonna be in that seat next year, but I don't think he deserves. It. I think there's other drivers who deserve that a lot more. So um, and I, to be honest, I think if Ricardo had didn't have his injury, um, maybe and and could have proved himself, I could have seen Ricardo replacing Checo at, at Red Bull next year. Maybe even if he didn't didn't have any experience, maybe Lawson bring him into Alpha Tauri alongside Sonoda, and then Perez. I don't know. Maybe he retires. Maybe he sits on the sidelines. Maybe another team somewhere might have picked him up. But um, yeah, he's, he's having a tough old time at the moment. Let's just say that. Now, Oscar Piastri, this is a difficult one. Of course, he got his first podium this weekend. Very well deserved. Great work. Beat his teammate in quali. P2. Front row start. Awesome work from Oscar. In the race, did not have the pace of his teammate at all. Did not have the race pace. He admitted it himself, though. He needs to work on the tyres. And for a rookie, you know, he's a rookie that's got a podium in his rookie season. Um, and his quality pace is amazing. He just has to work on the race pace and the tyre degradation. Fair enough. I think that's totally fine. He definitely didn't maximise, though. And I I mean, no. I think that's a bit harsh. He just he doesn't have the experience to maximise. So I think I'm going to give him an A. It's it's a lower A than Norris because Norris had the pace in the race. Um, but he did beat Norris in qualifying, and that's pretty big for me. And to get his first podium, I think it's amazing. I just don't think it's quite an S-tier performance, personally. But a very good result for Oscar. So glad to see him on the podium for the first time. But I think when you're finishing, you know, however many seconds, you know, 15, 16 seconds behind your teammate. Yeah, as a rookie, it's fine. But I just can't give you an S for that, you know? You know what I mean? I don't think I'm being too harsh there. George Russell. Um, yeah, I mean, he kind of got screwed over by the team, got put on a one-stop, which was not the way to go. Finished P7 in the end. Um, his pace seemed decent this weekend. He only just qualified behind Hamilton, so I'm going to give him a B. I think, honestly, the team... Either we're just trying something with him with the one stop to see if it would work, or they were just trying to minimize the inevitable sparks, <laughs> bad sparks that were going to be flying between these two. Um, so, yeah, I think a B for Russell is fair enough. Carlos Sainz, another pretty good weekend for him. Of course, not the win that he had in Singapore, but P6 for Sainz. And, yeah, um, I'm going to give him a B this weekend. Just he wasn't quite on Leclerc's pace um, all weekend on. Well, I say all weekend in quali and in the race as well. wasn't quite on the pace of Leclerc, but um, yeah, still a good weekend from Signs. Logan Sargent, another disappointing one. Um, it's another one that honestly I think I'm going to go F. I've been quite lenient on Sargent. I've been giving him like ease when he's like crashed himself out, but to crash out in, I think he had a moment in practice. He then crashed out in qualifying on his first lap. On his first lap in qualifying, he crashed out. Then he made contact with Bottas in the race, damaged his car enough to go into the pits and retire the car straight away as well. So I think just for that, I've got to give him an F. It's kind of getting inexcusable for Logan Sargent now. It really is. Lance Stroll, once again, I, I think he qualified like P17. Let me just bring that up. Uh, I have got Quali on here. Uh, where is Lancey Boy? Yep, P17 when his teammate qualified P10 um, and f did not finish P18 DNF when his teammate was P8. Um, I can't remember why he retired now. I think it was just a mechanical issue, wasn't it? It was like a rear wing issue. So I'm going to go E. I'm not going to quite go F for Stroll because he didn't crash out, but he didn't have the pace of his teammate at all this weekend. Um, and yeah, pretty woeful two races in a row for Stroll. Yuki Tsunoda, um, yeah, once again, pretty good. Do I give him an A? I mean, he got beat by Lawson, but he did get into Q3 and actually did a pretty good lap in Q3. So I think I'm going to give Sonoda an A. This is his home Grand Prix as well, so let's give him a bit more love. But um, yeah, did get beaten by Liam in the race, which is not great. But um, whether strategy had anything to do with that, I'm not really sure. But um, still, very good qualifying for him. And all in all, a pretty good race, to be honest. Um, Max Verstappen. S, Verstappen's back in the S's again, dominated this weekend. The only slight slip-up was that he didn't quite have the best start. 
almost got overtaken by Norris into turn one, but managed to stay ahead and never looked back after that. Just drove off into the distance like he does and like he's probably going to do for the rest of the season, um, especially when he almost certainly wins the championship in the sprint race in Qatar next time. That's going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, and then finally, we have Zhou Guanyu, who finished P13, and it's a C, because it's an Alfa Romeo that we don't ever get to see on screen, and don't really seem to be doing anything of interest, of having any pace at all, of recent times. But there we have it. That is my driver tier list for the 2023 Japanese Grand Prix. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.